Welcome to U.S. Immigration TV. Now, in this video, I will discuss where a spouse's possible fraud could jeopardize their family's green cards and immigration status. So make sure to watch this video until the end for some valuable lessons. And of course, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this channel. Now, here's the background. Recently, a couple consulted with me concerning the wife's application for naturalization. Now, the husband had been petitioned by an employer and his wife obtained her green card as the husband's derivative on that employment-based petition. Now, after being an immigrant for more than five years, the wife decided to apply for U.S. citizenship. So she went to the interview, everything seemed to go fine. You know, she answered all the questions and passed all the history and civics tests. So the officer at the end of the interview said he would need to review the file a little bit more before making a decision. Okay, so she left all hopeful. Well, a few days later, a notice arrived from USCIS asking for additional information evidence and documents. But what caused panic for the husband and wife was that among the documents being requested was verification that the husband remained employed by his petitioning employer after his green card was approved. Now the problem was that the husband had stopped working for that employer years before their green cards were approved. Therefore, the wife would not be able to provide that verification that the husband had worked for the petitioning employer after his green card was approved. So now her green card could be in jeopardy and of course her application for naturalization could be denied based on her having been unlawfully admitted to the U.S. or her green card was unlawfully obtained through fraud. Now, I've written several immigration articles and I've posted many videos on my YouTube channel, U.S. Immigration TV, about employment-based green cards through PERM or labor certification. One of the basic requirements is that once the green card is approved, the worker must work for that employer for a reasonable time. I mean, that's the whole basis for an employment-based petition. An employer needs a worker and once the green card is approved, the worker will work for the employer. So if the person never works for the petitioning employer or stopped working before the green card was approved, it could be considered that they obtained their green card through fraud. Now, let me give you a, an example or comparison. Suppose a person marries a U.S. citizen who petitions them as a spouse. Well, it's expected that they'll live together and the green card is typically approved based on the officer being satisfied that once the green card is approved, the couple will live together. But if the couple never lived together or they divorced before the marital green card is approved and without disclosing this to the USCIS, it could be considered fraud or a fixed marriage. So in the same way, if a person is petitioned by an employer, but never work for that employer or goes and works somewhere else before the case is approved, it could look like a fixed job. And this is very important in connection with people who obtain their green card through an employer's petition. If they later go on to file for naturalization, it's most likely they'll be questioned about whether they work for the petitioning employer and they will be asked to provide documents. Well, what makes this particular situation with this husband and wife unusual and it's really new and different is now the USCIS appears to be questioning derivative relatives about whether the principal beneficiary ever worked for the employer. Therefore, it appears that if any member of the family gets a green card through that employment-based petition and they later apply for U.S. citizenship, they should now be expected to be questioned and investigated on how the principal beneficiary obtained his or her green card. If, for example, the principal beneficiary never worked for the employer, it could jeopardize the derivative beneficiary's immigration status as well as their ability to naturalize. Now, if you are considering naturalizing, 
whether you were the principal beneficiary, meaning the worker being petitioned, or the derivative spouse or child, and green cards were obtained through an employment-based petition, I would strongly recommend that you consult with an attorney who can evaluate your case and assist in packaging your naturalization application. And even if your adjustment of status is still pending and you're no longer working for the employer, in certain circumstances, it is possible to lawfully change employers before the green cards are approved. And you may want to consult with an attorney about that. Remember, again, when you file for naturalization, your entire immigration history is reopened and examined. USCIS is evaluating and investigating if they may have approved your green card by mistake or an error, or whether you complied with the terms of the green card or had any other possible immigration violations that could subject you to removal or denial. An attorney can evaluate your case to make sure everything is in proper order. Now, I hope you found this video informative and useful. And of course, if you have anybody you know who may be in that situation, make sure to share this video with them, as well as like and subscribe to this channel. I'm Michael Gerfinkel, and thanks for watching U.S. Immigration TV.